Hey guys, it's Nate and this is the Nate or Tater channel. Alright, today I'm going to talk about cell phone towers and what is line of sight. That seems like a pretty simple concept, but it's not. So the radio frequencies kind of throw a couple loops at us. I'll go through them at high level. If you watch my channel, you notice I do a lot of home internet, so this fixed wireless uh, cell based home internet that's some T-Mobile stuff up there as well as Verizon and one of the things that a lot of people want to know is how do they get the best signal and one of the important things is understanding where your tower is at and then additionally to go another step further is talking about your connection from you to that tower and is it line of sight if you want to get a external antenna which antenna is the best one to get so I'll talk about all those things here and I'll say it's not as simple as pulling out the binoculars and then looking out there and seeing if you can find your tower. That is the most simple concept of line of sight and certainly that's what would make sense to me and maybe anyone else of, hey, I'm standing out on my balcony or my porch and I'm looking, I can see the top of that tower. That does not mean you have line of sight. So I'm gonna go through a couple details and what I'm gonna use is a couple websites I'll put the links down in the description below as always if you enjoy this content like the video down below subscribe to the channel additionally add any comments down below questions answers uh, things that you found uh, yourself as well as sharing the videos with others that might uh, be interested in it so let me hop on the computer here and share my screen to show you a couple quick steps that you can do to determine line of sight for your tower. And then I'll also talk quickly about what antenna would work best depending on your situation to your tower. All right, so now this is what I was talking about, that the RF signals are not a straight up laser beam. So that means that it doesn't just go from the tower to you. They emanate around and they make this, it's not you know cone shaped, and maybe it's a cone shape kind of from um, each side, but it makes this um, uh, elliptical, you know, shape in a 2D form, uh, but it's, it's really in 3D, um, so it's ellipsoid. But anyways, this is not the same depending on how far apart the antennas are or also what the frequency is of that specific um, band that you're connected to. So. You know, this is a couple examples here where it tells you, you know, this is an example of a house and, you know, roughly it's five meters high. So that's like 15 feet on each side. But then it's showing you that, you know, the radius for this specific example is uh, 5.7 meters for this uh, free null zone around it. And then you can see here's some examples of, you know, traffic could be blocking it, trees, buildings could be blocking it. And so this is on Wikipedia. It's this um, French uh, physicist. He's also uh, or was a civil engineer. And so this was back um, uh, a couple hundred years ago. But he's the one that kind of came up with this. That's what it's named after. Without getting into too many details, let me show you how you can quickly rough ballpark calculate if you have radio frequency line of sight versus visual line of sight. So this is a tool. All right, so this is a tool that you can use. And for this example, I just picked a, a tower that I knew that's right off I-75 and I can zoom in here and show you it. Now it looks a little bit like um, some giant uh, samurai came and sliced it off and it's falling, but I promise you that that's not the case. This one is all connected and standing up here and so I picked that spot there, and then as a example test, I actually picked this Holiday Inn Express right here as my other point. So let me have it pick those two points. And if you know um, GPS, you can actually type those in directly. But what you can see here is it gives you this radio path study, and what it's including is just the earth. So it's not even including trees. You know, it's just looking at topology of those zones and it's putting a straight line between the two to see if they connect without intersecting the ground. And it's red if it is not line of sight. So this one is obviously red right now, but 
there's a couple things that we need to change here. First is the height of each of our towers, our, our cell phone, gateway, whatever we have. And so on this side, I'm saying the blue one is me in Holiday Inn Express. Let's say I'm on the second story, or let's say I, you know, that's my house and I'm putting uh, antenna up outside, up high. So let's say I'm I'm eight meters high off the off the ground, you know. So that would be maybe something like a a second story roof uh, up there that you would uh, have that at, at the peak. And then on this side, obviously the tower is not on the ground either. That one is probably somewhere around 20, 25 meters. So 60 um, to 75 feet. And you can see all of a sudden now it switches to green, which means I have line of sight. But this tool is not taking into account the free node zone. So that means we got to do a little bit more math. Promise is easy. It's button clicking uh, unless you really want to do uh, something more uh, complicated. So here on this uh, page, and I'll have links to all these sites in the video description. So you have to expand the video description to see it. And you can click those links to find these. But what you'll see is the primary free node zone. So there's actually, uh, I think, an infinite number of free node zones. But really, it's the first one or two or three that really matter. And the um, good rule of thumb is to have 60% of the first free node zone clear. And that's what this now calculates is how big is that free node zone. And it's going to depend on how the farther away the towers are, the wider that zone gets and then the lower the frequency the wider that zone gets so here i am going to start i gotta go back here this one was yeah so 1.3 kilometers which i had to convert to miles that's about 0.8 and then let's say i'm on n41 for t-mobile which is uh, about 2.5 gigahertz so i'll click submit here it's going to do is quick calculation and then it's going to spit out what it says is the frenal zone which is about 20 and a half feet and then they list 80 percent of it but you know if you do 60 percent it's about 12 feet that we have to care about so i can go back so if i want to say do i have you know true rf line of sight i would take that 12 feet and i will go back here to this tool and i'm going to take away 12 feet so you know I'm basically dropping it down now that's not perfect because the middle of your um, distance is what's going to drop down that full 12 feet the other uh, areas the closer you get to each side you know that ellipsoid shape goes up so it's not perfect but this is this is probably more complicated than, than you have to do so to do that I'm going to take away four meters 12 feet like I was saying and sure enough they dropped and I'm still line of sight so I'm barely clear so this tells me these two points within 41 I can say truthfully that I'm line of sight assuming there's no trees and if you look at it there really aren't any trees um, uh, there that I would have to worry about so now the thing to consider again is what if you're on a different band so if I go back up here and I go down to in 71 so that's their extended range um, 5G. That one's at 600 megahertz, so 0.6 gigahertz. So let me hit submit there. We'll see how this changes from 20.5 feet. Now it goes up to 42 feet. So it's, you know, it's doubled uh, because of that frequency change. So now my 60% is like, what, 25 feet radius. So now I need to go back here. And I need to take away about 25 feet, I'm saying, of my previous numbers. So it was 8 before, which, guess what, 8 is about 25 feet. So now I'm going to be at 0 again. And, oh, I already lost my line of sight just by doing that. And I have not taken the full 8 away from here. But now I do that, I can see I no longer have true line of sight. Now, this does not mean that you won't pick up signal. You do not need line of sight for the cell signals, radio frequencies to reach you. They bounce off walls and and um, they can go through trees and they can go through some earth, you know, and then they can bounce off stuff. So you don't need it to get it, but 
it's something to consider next because we're going to talk about what antenna you should get. So I recently did a video where I put up this panel antenna from Waveform. If you're interested in buying an antenna, I'll have a 5% coupon in the description as well that you can get. So you can get 5% off this uh, number here. But this one works well if you do not have line of sight and you need to try to block some unwanted signals if you, you know, have interference, you know, signals coming from the sides or back. This one is, does better than that. It's 11 dB gain, which isn't crazy high, but it means that it, it gives you the ability, you know, you get lost when you put the cables on them. So this will basically give you an ability to put your antenna wherever you need with this 30 foot cable and you can try to get a signal. But if you have line of sight or near line of sight where you're, you know, you're, you're you have good visual line of sight, but maybe there's some obstacles in the freedom zone, you might really want to look at doing this log periodic, which has the same gain. So still 11 dB gain, but it's a more focused antenna. So this antenna is um, not as you know broad as the panel antenna. And so it gives you the potential to get better gain if you have a clearer path to that tower. So that's something to consider. You can do, this is a four by four shown, but you know you can also just do a two by two uh, version similar to what that, that single panel is. But there's an interesting option out there that uh, is newer and that's this grid uh, parabolic antenna that they're calling Gritty. And so this one now, if we go look at it, it has about the same, I guess a little bit more at this lower range, so an N71 type band. It's going to give you 12 to 17 dB, but where it's really impressive is at these higher frequencies. So this N41, like I said, is about 2,500 megahertz. So this one's giving you 20 to 23 dB gain, which is uh, impressive and then if you get up in this range this is more like a c-band range which is a newer um, spectrum that verizon and at&t have bought into now i guess t-mobile has bought some as well but this one is 23 to 26 db so really uh, high gain for those frequencies and this one would um, be the best for for those so those are a couple options that you can think about as far as what antenna types to get. And then if you have any questions, put them down below and I'll try to answer them. So thanks for watching.